to the Ventura County's Air Pollution Control Board. I would like to do a call, call to order, please. Board Member Bennett? Here. Board Member Brogy? Here. Board Member Foy? Here. Board Member Morgan? Present. Board Member Parks? Here. Board Member Pollock? Here. Board Member Ramirez? Here. Board Member Sharkey? Present. Board Member Zaragoza? Here. Chair Long? Here. Did okay. Next item is our minutes from the last meeting of October 9th. Does have any, anyone have any discussions on that? If I can get a motion, it's been motioned and second. Any other discussion? I'm abstaining. I wasn't here. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any noes? And there's one abstention. Abstain. Thank you very much. Two, Supervisor Foy as well. All right, our agenda review. Is there any modifications, Mr. Villegas? Rainies? Okay, could I get a motion to approve? Second. It's been motion and second. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any noes? Abstentions? Motion's been approved. Moving on to public comment. Do we have any public comments that are not on the agenda today? Thank you. First one, we have one speaker card for Leslie Purcell. You will have three minutes. Thank you, good afternoon. Um, I have a couple things I wanted to bring up. One is site-specific, which is the corner of Olivas Park. Well, it's not just the corner, but Olivas Park Drive as it goes down to Harbor. Um, after the recent rainstorm, there was a huge amount of mud and dirt spread all over the road. And as it dried out, it becomes a dust storm when traffic goes through there. This is a highly used corridor. Um, and I drive that way several times during the week, and it was really like clouds and clouds of dust, especially if a truck goes through there. There's farm equipment coming from the Duda area. I think that's the sign there. It's on the corner, and they've got a lot of dirt and, and large equipment. And I think partly when they go in and out, it drags it. I, I saw one of their big tractors going down the road and it was clouds and clouds of dust. So I don't know how this should be regulated. I know there is regulation about fugitive dust and this is an ongoing problem. There's still a lot of dirt out there. It's, it's more in the middle of the road now so it's not quite as stirred up as it was a few days ago. But I think it's a hazard both for people's um, breathing and also just visibility when it's really um, in the air like that. So that was one thing. The other issue I'd like to bring up is flaring, and this is countywide. We have so much flaring going on all the way up to the big one along the um, 101 at La Conchita, which I was told years ago they were trying to figure out how to capture that gas and use it. And there are many, many back in the hills. Sometimes at night you can see the glow there's a big one on the other side of the Santa Clara River, on the Oxnard side, that's been going for a while. I met an oil field engineer from Texas recently, and he said he could not believe, visiting here, how many flares we have. He says, in Texas, they are not allowed to do that. They flare initially when the, when the oil is drilled, and then they have to cap it until they put in pipes and or, and or find a way to use that gas. They do not flare. Neither Oklahoma, he said as well. So I think it's about time that we, as a supposedly environmentally friendly state, should figure out a way that we can also not be flaring this gas. It's a waste of the gas. It 
creates pollutants in the air and also increases um, some of our climate change, global warming issues, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know that Mr. Villegas will follow up with those. Okay. Yeah, a, Madam Chair, you had a comment? if I could, I'd just like to ask the, you know, part of this is City of Ventura issue with, with the streets, but part of it is the dust in terms of the, the part that's in my district. So I'd just like to ask Mr. Villegas to both investigate the dust from, from the standpoint of APCD, but also if you'd contact the city about what they might be able to do to participate in that. Exactly. And then the issue of flaring has come up a number of times, and I would like to make sure that you get back to this. Absolutely. Point. That's <laughs> going to be on one of the items today. Great. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, board comments. Do, uh, do anyone of our board members have a comment? Yes, Mrs. Ramirez. Well, I assume we're going to acknowledge, and that's coming up later, uh, our uh, members who've served so well, and our, uh, we're not going to be seeing him here in this context, but we're going to do that later. So yes. I'll, I'll withhold my comments till then. Okay. All right. Moving on to our consent item number nine. Uh, if there's any. I'll move for approval. Thank you. First and a second. Any further questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any noes? Abstentions? Motion approved unanimously. Next item, our presentation of board member service awards. Um, we have a few of you that will be leaving, and your time here on this board has been uh, well spent. We appreciate all your feedback and information. And I think that we do an amazing job for our county. Um, I'm going to go down with uh, Mike, and then we'll do the awards. I just want to, on behalf of staff, thank you to the four board members that served on this board. I know it takes time out of your busy days, but I think we have an important mission and we've really made some great strides forward in Ventura County. And I'm just going to start off with, uh, based on years on the board, Sean Sharkey. Yeah. You can come down. Okay. All right, John, I know you've been having a lot of retirement parties. But we would be remiss to say thank you to all that you've done for the Air Quality Board. We'll do board comments after. Yeah. Madam Chair, yes. are you going to make board yes. comments afterwards or now? Do them now for okay. each individual. That'd be great. I am. Um, after, after you share what you're going to share. I um, personally, John, you know, I, I, I'm, it's been an honor working with you, I, I think, for the last 20 plus years. We've worked together with APCD, with the Gulf Coast Transit with Beacon, with the RDP-21 going to uh, D.C. And, and I, I think you've done a great job, not only as a council member, but also as a mayor of the city of uh, Wainimi. And I, I got personally got to know you. And my wife and I went to your house and had dinner a couple of times. And you and Beverly were just great people to, to know. So, and we're going to miss you. And you did a great job. And I hope you have a great retirement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Okay. Stay up here. And we'll get a picture okay. of all of you. Yeah, on behalf of staff, I just wanted to commend John. He was he was dutiful in, in helping us achieve the quorum, and and he he was very he, he was obviously a very intelligent man, and I really appreciated his input and guidance on so many of the issues that came before the board. All right. The next one up is Mike Morgan. And Madam Chair, I also like to share that I worked with Mike uh, for many, many, many years uh, on APCD, as, as, as we know, and also the Oxnard Camarillo Airport Authority. And Mike has done a great job for the city of uh, Camarillo, not only as a council member, Mike, but also as a mayor. And I'm going to miss your stories to, to China. I don't even <laughs> Every time I talked to Mike, I had to do a, a, a trip to China and as a business person. You're going to be missed, you know, and I really enjoyed uh, working with you, Mike, and, and many of the agencies together. And have a great retirement. Thank you. Yeah, 
Just wanted to, from my perspective, I've worked with Mike uh, many years on the Basin Wide Control Council, so we, we did the drive up to Santa Barbara many, many times. And I'm gonna really miss uh, not just a board member, but, but a friend. So. Uh, we have Supervisor Foy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, this. you know, this morning we spend, how many hours on your thanking you, uh, Supervisor Foy? Too many. Too many hours. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. I think Supervisor Foy belonged to how many uh, eight, uh, organizations? Uh, about 18 or? Uh, too many. Too many. Thank you again for your good job. And I just want to thank Supervisor Foy. I, you know, he, he was always straightforward. I always knew where he was going to come from. And if, if I kept the fiscal shape of the district in line with his wishes, I, I never had to worry about the Taxpayers Association. And I, I'm going to miss working with him. He's a true professional. All right, and lastly, we have Carrie Burby. Madam Chair, you know, I also have a couple of notes here for uh, Carrie. You know, I um, got to know Sherry here at APCD, and I understand she did a great job for the city of Fillmore, not only as a council member, but as a mayor. But I'm going to miss sharing snacks with, uh, with Carrie every time we have APCD. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Carrie, I still have some snacks here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your good work. And lastly, I really enjoyed having uh, Carrie on the board, and certainly she's been on the standing committee. She's a quick study, very sharp, and when she was uh, first elected, I, I had some contacts in the DA's office, and they let me know she'd be very good to work with, and they were right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss you, Carrie. All right. First off, we could just turn around. Board members, do you want to join in or just stay there? It's your choice. Come on down, please. Excellent. I think that would be great. You guys just squeeze in. Yeah, we're taking you out. No. Only for it. Give us a one, two, three. <laughs> Here, I'm squeeze this in there. Everybody turn sideways. Then there you go. Um, I'd like to say something to the board yes. while we're here. Sharky, you want to say something? <laughs> In uh, years and years ago, 13 years ago or more, uh, I was called by uh, the Air Quality Board and saying, Mike, how would you like to be on the board? Well, knowing I was on VCTC and a bunch of others, I said, well, not really, uh, because I'm so busy. He said, I said, but no, if no one does it, give me a call back. An hour later, they called me and said, Mike, no one wants to do it. You want to do it? I said, okay, I'll do it. And it was a great experience, because working on something you didn't know that much about, the Air Quality Board, no, the Air Control Board, not many people do. They're elected officials. But this really brings it to life and brings all the different things that affect us. Federal laws, state laws, all of them. Uh, and so I learned a lot. And even, even going up three, four times a year, going up with Mike to Santa Barbara uh, and listening to the others and what their problems were and how they were handling it was an experience also. So thank you all for uh, bearing with me and working with me. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you Mike. Well, I can't let Mike have the last word. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I do want to thank the, the board. This has been a, it's always been an extremely talented board. Everybody that's on here is, is, is just 
some of the top-notch folks around this county. Uh, you know, unlike Mike, I did want to get on this board because of a couple of local issues that we had to deal with in my neighborhood. Uh, but the one thing I always remember is, is when we look at where we are now compared to where we were back, well, when I started or some folks even, Dick Baldwin was here, he, he predates me on everything. Okay. Uh, but you look where we were 25 years ago and you look where we are now, we've made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, progress is incremental, but when you look at the total effect, we've made a big difference. And I think everybody that's ever served on this board, certainly in my time here and before, uh, should be proud of the work that's been done. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, I would like to say this, and I, I say it for all of the um, members of this board who've given lots of time over the years. Uh, people in the public who haven't served on, certainly on Board of Supervisors or a City Council or in other, some other endeavor um, may think it looks easy to show up. Staff does a lot of work, but uh, we have to make some very important decisions for the health of the people. And I think particularly with air, we can't see it. Sometimes we can smell it, and that's when we know that we have some, perhaps a problem. But it's so important, and I know it's a sacrifice for uh, people to be in public service. And um, our supervisors are perhaps not as well paid as we would like, they would like, but they are full-time employees. But our city council members are part-time employees who really give full-time, and I, I want to particularly acknowledge uh, our three council members who are moving on. I hope to um, enjoy uh, their time away from uh, perhaps this particular public service, but it is a sacrifice and needs to be recognized, acknowledged, and appreciated, and I, I certainly do. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I had the opportunity to, to make some comments mm -hmm. to John at the, our last Beacon meeting, so I, I won't repeat sort of my, <laughs> my general feelings about him. Um, but I do want to say I appreciate uh, uh, Council Member Ramirez pointing out the, the special contribution that city members make. And um, so I'm going I'm to tell you quickly this quick story and that I think it, it, it relates. And that was that Linda Johnson, he was the vice president for, for Kennedy. And Kennedy appointed his cabinet. And somebody said to Linda Johnson, what do you think? And he said, not much. And he said, you don't think much of, of your president's cabinet? He said, no. And he said, why? And he said, not one of them even ran for dog catcher. <laughs> and, and his point was, until you put your name on the ballot, until you're willing to publicly say, I'm willing to lead, and then let people say yes or no, they want you, you don't know what it's like. And it takes a certain amount of courage to do that. And so to both of you, mm -hmm. thank you for being willing to put your name on the ballot. It got you elected, got you a chance to lead for a long period of time, and hopefully someday again you'll, you'll, you'll find the leadership opportunities that you want to, to, to engage in. But I really want you to know that I admire people that have the guts to put their name on the ballot. Thank you. Yes. Could I just say something? Because I work with two of them down there on a the thing called SOAR. When we first pushed for that SOAR the first time around, and, I, and another gentleman and I were the co-chair in Camarillo, and we won. We did a great accomplishment by saving the farmland around the cities. Uh, and now some have also put, like we put the stuff at the bottom of the grade. I got tired of voting four times over 10 years, say no. And so we put that under SOAR also. So I think we're protecting Ventura County by doing what we did. And thank you guys. Councilmember Brogy. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone for your very kind words and you know your support and your endorsement um, all, all the way through this process. The being on city council um, has been an incredible experience, um, and that has allowed me, obviously, to be on this board, uh, the Groundwater Sustainability Agency, um, Public Safety Committee with the League. These opportunities that I would have missed had I not put my name on the ballot um, and run four years ago. Um, it's been an incredible experience. Um, I've gotten to... Um, meet all of you here, for example, just wonderful people that have, um, our paths have crossed. Um, it's, I'm going to take some time to just think about what I'm going to do next, but um, I certainly am not going away. Um, you know, I love public service. 
uh, and I will find a way to stay active again. Um, I'm weighing pros and cons, some options that are coming my way. Um, but anyway, I just want to thank everyone um, on this board specifically for all of your support and just, you know, being wonderful people and, you know, allowing me to participate in this um, with you. So thank you. I, I just also want to thank you all for serving because uh, it's not the most exciting board, the Air Pollution Control Board, but uh, it, it does take time out of your schedule. And those of you who do a little bit extra, um, like Morgan going up to Santa Barbara and then the, the standing committee and all of that, just really appreciate it. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know all the things that you have done because it's, you are on all these other different boards and all, but um, from serving with you, we know and appreciate that you were giving your time for your constituents and serving them well, so thank you. Madam Chair, I just want to probably thank uh, David Bollock uh, Paul, excuse me for getting reelected again. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we. There'd be nobody left, right, John? <laughs> Supervisor Foy. Anyway, I appreciate everybody's hard work. Uh, Steve's right. If you don't put your name on the ballot, you never know what it's really like to be out there and, and the votes you have to make and do that. And, but also, then, do you all, don't also have the opportunity to work with people like Mike and his whole staff and his team. And, and I got to tell you, Mike, it's been great over all these 12 years. And I appreciate your always willing to find that balance between. We're regulators, but we also got to keep this economy and this community working. And you've always, you know, found that way to do it, keep your fees down, your rates down. And you did a lot of that because you guys were really good finding effective efficiencies throughout that whole department. And uh, I wish most everybody could run yours as efficient as you guys do. So I do appreciate it. And it was an honor to be part of this board and all the rest of this board of supervisors. And do we get the opportunity to serve this tremendous county that we all enjoy. So thank you. Correct. And, and just in a closing note, uh, thank you for all your years and your dedication and support for our community. I know this won't be the last time we see of you. I expect and I charge you to continue to give our comments because that is the improvement of our community is from hearing from our community. And also, I know that your time and effort has never been recorded and it's away from your family and so forth. So I just value and appreciate all the time and effort that you've done for this and for this board as well. So with that, thank you. And I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item number 11. As an introduction to Mr. Tyler Harris, who's going to present the next uh, three items, I just want to let you know that, as always, we looked at the most cost-effective projects and we're going to be allocating 4.4 million dollars in clean air grants today but in addition to the Carl Moyer program we also implementing the funding agricultural replacement measures for emission reductions or farmer program and the community air protection program mm -hmm. both of these new programs have targets for allocating the funds in disadvantaged and low income communities and I'm very pleased to let you know that staff's recommendations well exceed these targets. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Tyler. Good afternoon, Chair Long, members of the board. My name is Tyler Harris. I'm an air quality engineer with the district. The Carl Moyer program provides incentives for businesses to replace older diesel powered equipment with new lower emission equipment. The program is funded with a portion of the $12 DMV smog abatement fee, a local $2 vehicle registration surcharge, and a portion of the $1.75 per tire disposal fee. This is the 20th year the district has administered a Carl Moyer grant program. This year we received applications to replace 84 pieces of agricultural equipment, five pieces of construction equipment, and repower five marine vessels. In addition, we received two applications that did not fit the district funding categories, an infrastructure pro project application and an application for funds to install carbon dioxide capture equipment on buses. Staff evaluated each piece of equipment and ranked each project by cost effectiveness in the terms of dollars per ton of emissions reduced. We are recommending that your board approve funding of $2,587,138 for the most cost effective projects. The grants would help pay for new lower emission replacements for 19 farm tractors, three agricultural loaders, one agricultural forklift, one industrial loader, and 11 engines and five marine vessels. Projected emission reduction, 
totals for today's recommendations are 21.9 tons per year of ozone precursors, 1.2 tons per year of diesel particulate matter, and 221 metric tons per year of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. Staff will administer the grant agreements and ensure that contract requirements are met before making grant payments. We are also requesting authorization to make minor administrative changes to the grant agreements as needed, subject to approval by County Council. That's all I have. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Yes. Councilmember Ramirez. Um, I, this is wonderful, and I think, again, um, my common uh, comment at these meetings is the public needs to know what great things are uh, proposed here and going, uh, going to be funding cleaner air. I have a, a number of friends in these uh, proposed, among the proposed grantees, and um, I'm sure they're going to use, use this, uh, these funding grants very well. Uh, but I would really like to see us make a more um, robust effort to get the public to know, Mr. Villegas, to know that what are we doing with their uh, tax dollars, how we're cleaning the air, making it healthier for everybody. Actually, uh, last week, Tyler and I worked up a new press release, uh, really stressing the increased amount this year. Uh, generally, in the past, it's been just the Moyer program and you know, going from about $2.5 million to $4.4 million and really stressing the environmental justice angle. I'll certainly make sure that Mr. David Cruz at Radio Laser, who's expected, expressed an in interest in environmental justice issues, is aware of what's going on, and we'll get that out right after this meeting. I'd like to uh, get that, whatever you put it. I know you're going to send it I to can the board, so I can, also. we can yes. all uh, distribute it. Thank you. Yes, please uh, distribute that to the board. Thank you for those comments. Um, can I get a motion to uh, approve based on the recommended actions? First and a second. Second. Thank you. Or actually, I'll take John's for the second um, since we have so many hands. So it's been first and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions? All right, motion has been approved. Thank you. Moving on to item number 12. Uh, good afternoon again, Chair Long, member of the board. My name is Tyler Harris. I'm an air quality engineer with the district. The Funding Agricultural Replacement Measures for Emission Reductions, or FARMER program, is des designed to reduce agricultural sector emissions by providing grants, rebates, and other financial incentives for agricultural harvesting equipment, heavy duty trucks, agricultural pump engines, tractors, and other equipment used in agricultural operations. The program is funded by allocations from the Air Quality Improvement Fund, and the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. Your board authorized the district to participation in the Farmer Program on May 8, 2018. For the first year of the Farmer Program, staff essentially operated as an expansion of the Carl Moyer Program, assigning Farmer funds to projects that, that were w qualified under the Farmer Program restrictions and advanced the uh, environmental justice goals of the program. Utilizing this in, in existing incentive structure allows us to at least initially uh, uh, spend funds efficiently and expeditiously. We're recommending that your board approve funding of $1,192,602 for projects qualifying for farmer grants. The grants would help pay for new lower emission replacements, 19 farm tractors, and three agricultural loaders. Projected emission reductions for, today, for today's recommended actions 17.5 tons per year of ozone precursors, 1.1 tons per year of diesel particulate matter, and 100 metric tons per year of carbon dioxide greenhouse gas. Staff will administer the grant agreements and ensure contract requirements are met before making grant payments. And again, we are also asking authorization to make any minor administrative changes to the grant agreements uh, subject to review and approval by county council. And that is all I have. Mr. Harrison, thank you so much. Uh, it feels like Christmas with all these awards. Um, and please, if you're putting a press release out on this, I would think that we would all want to know about it. Um, and I get a motion to approve with a recommended action. So moved. Second. It's been first and second. Um, all in, any questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. And the noes, abstentions? 
Motion has been approved. Madam Chair, on um, backing up to item 11, yes. I just, I don't know how I missed it before, but I should probably abstain on that because of a contribution to my. Um, yes. If anyone does uh, work with any of the affiliations, that's great. Thank you very I much. I missed that before, but yeah, there was one. It wasn't on my notes, so I apologize. That's okay. Okay. Are we good for 11 and 12? Moving yes. on now to 13. Good afternoon again, Chair Long, members of the board. My name is Tyler Harris, air quality engineer with the district. Uh, this third program, the Community Air Protection or CAP program, was developed by California Air Resources Board to implement Assembly Bills 134 and 617. The legislature directed the appropriated funds to be used for grants to reduce exposure in communities most in affected by air, air pollution. The program is funded by allocations from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. Your board authorized the district to participate in the CAP program on May 8th, 2018. For the first year of the CAP program, staff essentially operated as an expansion of the Carl Moyer program, assigning CAP funds to projects that qualify under the CAP restrictions and advance the environmental justice goals of the program. Utilizing existing incentive program framework, at least initially, allows funds to be spent efficiently and expeditiously. We are recommending that your board approve funding of $624,050 for projects qualifying for CAP grants. Grants would help pay for new lower emission replacements for 10 farm tractors and two agricultural forklifts. Projected emission reduction totals for today's recommendations are 4.9 tons per year of ozone precursors, 0 0.3 tons per year of diesel particulate matter, and 36 metric tons per year of carbon dioxide, greenhouse gas. Again, staff will administer the grant agreements and ensure contract requirements are met before making grant payments. And we are requesting authorization to make minor administrative changes to the grant agreements subject to review and approval by county council. And that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Very detailed reports. I know we appreciate. Is there any questions? All right, can I get a motion to um, approve with the recommended actions? Mr. Zaragoza is the first and the second. Sharkey, uh, any further questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 May I, may yes. I just make a, a, a an additional comment about press release? I think it would be great to have these all in one release with the total number of tons of pollutants that are being removed. I mean, it's, it's very impressive. So I think that will get people's attention. Thank you. Oh. OK. Um, were there any no's on that motion? <laughs> or abstentions. Okay, I just want to finish the vote. All um, motion has been approved unanimously. Thank you. Also, okay, moving on to 14, approval of the Ventura County Air Pollution Control Board's basic best available retrofit control. Good afternoon, Chair Long, the member of the board. My name is Ali Ghassami, planning manager, APCD planning manager for, uh, for uh, rules development and incentive program. As part of AB 617, um, uh, actually implementation, districts that they are not in non-attainment area are to be ad to adopt an expedited, expedited schedule to implement best available retrofit control technology called BARCT for existing sources. BARCT is an emission limitation which achieve maximum achievable, achievable emission reduction considering cost effectiveness analysis. As part of implementing rule AB 617, CARB staff has identified four facilities that they are required to meet BARC requirements. As such, staff reviewed and evaluated the source specific rules associated with these facilities and determined that there are four rules that needs to be amended to meet the BARC requirements, and there is one new rule that we're going to propose. These rules will be applicable to all facility within the Ventura County, and they are gas turbine rules. It's going to be applicable to gas turbines, boiler and process heaters, bulk loading facilities, and uh, fugitive components such as valves, flanges, and the new rule is going to be for flare. Now, I have before you a request to, for authorization and approval this BARC rule making schedule. And the schedule are based on the number of emission being reduced, actually amount of emission that being reduced, at the same time number of facilities being impacted. That's how we set up the schedule as you see. 
uh, I'll be happy to answer any question you may have. Are there any questions? All right. Um, can we get a motion for the recommended action? So moved. It's been first. Second. And second. All in favor say aye. Oh. Aye. Any no's or abstentions? Thank you. Also, there was a few people that uh, just walked out, and I believe they were the grant uh, recipients. So if you could, please let them know. We really appreciate their time coming here today to make sure that we know the value that they're receiving. Thank you. All right, moving on to 15. Yeah, this is the annual rulemaking calendar required under Health and Safety Code. It needs to be published each January. Uh, we've tried to make the list as comprehensive as possible, including all rules that could potentially come before your board in the upcoming year. I'm going to highlight the ones we're currently working on. Uh, we're working on the rule for composting operations. This is going to be an involved process. It needs to be carefully crafted to be workable. We also need to achieve the emission reductions. And, and lastly, we're also trying to create a rule that's going to prevent odor issues for any neighbors or other business uses near these types of facilities. <clears throat> Obviously, we just mentioned we're started on our gas turbine rule, and we're also updating our rule two definition of reactive organic compounds. And that actually can provide some relief for folks who are using solvent cleaning, <clears throat> gives them some new compounds that they can use uh, in compliance with our rules. That's all I have. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for providing that calendar of information. Does anyone have any questions on it? Just one example of that, uh, you know, those that use that kind of compound. Uh, do, do people work on furniture, making furniture, you know, wood products? Uh, would they, they, would have, they could change over to this better quality solvent, could it not? Yes, we have a wood products, uh, wood products manufacturing rule that covers a lot of the stains and, and coatings, and, and we also have adhesive rules. What this would do is it would allow some of those manufacturers to use some of these additional compounds and still meet the reactive organic compound limits. Can we send that to China so we make sure they do the same thing? <laughs> All right. Uh, can I get a motion for uh, the recommended actions from staff? Second. It's been first and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any no's or abstentions? Motion has been approved. Thank you. Next item. Yes, this is a request by uh, Chair Long. She wanted yes. a little report back <laughs> on what's going on with the citizens for responsible oil and gas. They did receive a sizable community assistance grant from the California Air Resources Board under the AB 617 community air protection program. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Kimberly Rivers. Thank you. And as Kim comes in, I really do appreciate what CFROG, the grant that you've done, and that you have met with me for some to provide me some information. So we just thought it was valuable for all of our cities and everyone on this board to know the information as well. So with that, Mrs. Rivers. And there's a slide, a slide right? Presentation. Yeah. There we go. Fabulous. And you should have the remote. Down there. This one? Yes. Okay. Forward. 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 Backwards. Backwards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I know many of you. Some of you I haven't had the chance to meet in person. I'm Kimberly Rivers, Executive Director of Seafrog. We are a nonprofit based in Ventura County. This year the organization turned five, um, a young organization, and we were really excited to get this grant. It is for just under half a million dollars. It's a two-year program awarded as part of funding um, through AB 617, the CARB Community Air Protection Program. Um, we, one of, so our project partners are of course APCD, Cal State University Channel Islands, Sonoma Tech, um, a Northern California air monitoring company, um, and Coalition for Clean Air, representatives from all of those Project partners serve on our technical advisory committee, which is chaired by Dr. Steve Colome, who I think many of you know, he's an advisor to Seafrog and serves on um, the APCD advisory board representing the Ojai Valley. Um, our program, the original, the applications were submitted in April, and the program was originally meant to get started late June. There was a delay from the state 
and funding didn't get really approved until September. So, you know, then we're able to start work. So we've just recently gotten all of the contracts signed with our subcontractors and work is underway. And so that's what I'm here to update you about. Um, my plan is to give you a pretty brief summary and then answer questions. Um, so essentially there are three parts to our program. Um, my people, my heir, or mi gente, mi ere. Part of the program funds um, in, over the entire two years the hiring of a part-time bilingual community organizer. And I'm happy to say we found a fabulous young man, Oscar Vasquez, who's a resident of Oxnard and a junior at Cal State Channel Islands studying environmental communications. And he's off and running. Um, he will be in uh, working in the two um, overly burdened communities that our program targets, which is the South Oxnard area and the Ventura Avenue area. These are state designated disadvantaged communities through the Cal Enviro Screen tool. And then a third target community for our program is the Upper Ojai area. While that is not a designated, obviously, a disadvantaged community, it is potentially considered an overly burdened community. And part of our program looks at gathering more data for that area so we can understand what's going on in that area regarding air quality. So there's the My People, My Air program, the My School, My Air program, and then the Discovering Seeps. And I'm going to go through each one of those in reverse order from this list. Um, so the Discovering SEEPS is primarily going to be managed by Cal State University Channel Islands. Dr. Sean Anderson, the director of the Environmental Science and Resource Management, is the lead of that program with his graduate students. <coughs> I know that yesterday they actually had their program kind of kickoff meeting where they do their internal work to start this program. So it's just really early. Um, the, this is a photograph that I actually took of the seeps in Upper Ojai that had been ignited by the Thomas fire. Yep. I believe this was in February. Um, we also believe there were many seeps that were revealed during the Thomas fire that weren't previously mapped. And now because vegetation is gone, they can be mapped. And they're going to be mapped using drone technology. Mm -hmm. So students who are FAA licensed pilots will file flight plans and fly drones to map seeps and then air sensors and air monitors will be mounted on those drones and will actually take air samples, you know, from high up and different altitudes depending on the flight plan that's approved. Um, we do have plant, this is another photograph taken by a resident in Upper Ojai in April of this year, just before we submitted the grant application, showing how long those seeps were still burning and emitting vapors into the area. Um, at this point, we have a pretty low expectation that seeps are still burning, but we'll find out, right? That's part of science. Um, the other part of the program, My School, My Air, uses the Kids Making Sense curriculum developed by Sonoma Technology. Um, and it's already underway, and actually we are booked, the air beams are booked um, throughout the entire school year at this point for this year. Um, in Ventura Unified, Ojai Unified, and then next year, they will be moving into the Oxnard area. So this is a program where the grant pays for the substitute teaching days so the teacher can come to the teacher training, learn how to um, lead their students in using the air monitors. So this young lady, a fifth grader at Sheridan Elementary along the avenue, is holding the air monitor up. Um, testing the air, and one of her classmates nearby has a paired um, GPS smartphone that is showing the data, the particulate matter, um, the temperature, and humidity. There's another picture from there showing the air beam up close. And the students, right, they design their route. They make hypothesis and, and see what they see. Say that again. 
fiction versus mm -hmm. fiction? I'm not sure if it's life science, but I know that it does meet the standards, the science standards. I'm not okay. sure if it's life science or which one it falls okay. under. Thank you. It might be earth hmm? might be earth yeah, it might be earth science. I'm not sure. Um, so then this is sort of the, the big part that CFROG um, is really a part of with our community organizer working in the communities um, to form community air action teams. So we just had our first meetings in Oxnard last week. This week are our first meetings in Ventura. Um, there's a second round of meetings that are starting the end of January to do community outreach to educate the people about air quality issues and then they actually get to do what the students do. So we will be deploying the air monitors um, into the community for them to take home for a certain number of weeks or days. And that community air action team will be developing that plan. Mm -hmm. right? So this is about community engagement, community involvement. We don't decide how long they're going to have them. We look at what's reasonable and we talk with them about what works. Um, in conjunction with kind of what we need to get a good data set, right? So they're becoming neighborhood scientists. Um, the community air action teams will gather that data and information. It will be pushed, is the word that the scientists use, up to um, a website that's hosted by Sonoma Technology and its public source data so that the route of walking, you know, so they're carrying the air monitors can be seen and it takes a sample every second um, as they're walking and they can see all the other people in their community air action team in the area that have done this with them. And the idea is that at the end, the, um, the information will be collated and mapped by grad students at Cal State Channel Islands, and there'll be a community charrette meeting held where APCD officials, you all will be notified, sit local city council members, um, other members of the community to come and look at that information and have a community conversation about where stationary air monitors should be placed and more robust monitoring is required. Um, and that's part of that community engagement, those mandates of AB 617 to help get the public engaged and involved in the policy making, right, to improve their community air going forward. Um, and these are the meetings happening right now. And my information, that's essentially the crux of my formal presentation because I wanted to leave lots of time for questions. Um, if you have them. Can I ask a question on the timeline? Do you have yes. a timeline? You say that it's a two-year program. So what's your expectations to hit the deadline? Yes. So yeah, it all got truncated a little bit. So we're a couple months behind schedule. By the end of year one, um, we expect to be back on schedule. So that's in June is the end of year one. And then it will be you know, July to June 2020. And we'll be on schedule. So there's two phases. So what I kind of described with the community air action teams will happen twice and with the schools it happens twice, phase one and phase two. Okay, and then another question I had was in regards to the action groups going in the neighborhoods and so forth, mm -hmm. um, just making sure safety for them and also safety for private property. Mm -hmm. If you have drones or meters, are we going into backyards of people or their property? How is that handled? That's a great question. So I'll take, so I heard two questions there, one about the drones and then one about the handheld air monitors. Mm -hmm. So all laws and regulations always apply to all of us. So these are members of the public who will have a monitoring device and they are allowed to go wherever they're allowed to go. So they're not allowed to go onto private property where they don't have permission to go. Um, now the question came up, and this is something Sonoma Tech has had happen with these, is um, in the, another part of the state. It was up in Northern California, and it was actually school kids who went into their local McDonald's with the air beams. And they had hypothesized that air quality would be better outside than inside. Um, and so they went in and they saw huge spikes. There was something going on inside of that McDonald's, right? So that's a business, right? But 
What ended up happening was the kids created a presentation that, and they notified the manager of that store and those people got involved and they did a presentation to that local city council and they were able to figure out what the problem was. There was some problem going on with the grillers or something inside and, and that store manager, they were able to fix that problem. So, um, so no, they're not supposed to go into private areas? No. Are you I said they're allowed to go to wherever sell. they're allowed to go. So all regular lots. So if they, you know, they're allowed to walk into malls and restaurants right. and okay. stores and all of that thing. I mean, the thing to keep in mind is this entire program is not meant to be regulatory in nature or create um, data that even the APCD can necessarily look at and, and enforce laws and regulations, right? It's a neighborhood scientist thing. Um, these are air beams that any person can buy. Um, so, so wherever public can go and they're welcome, then they can use these air monitors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, I think not, that's yeah, important for just, us to know. Yeah, they're not allowed to trespass. And, right. Yeah. Okay. So then with the drones, and we kind of had a conversation about this before. Yes. So drones are governed by the FAA. Right, the same rules as airplanes. Mm -hmm. So, and Cal State Channel Islands has a very specific and very robust um, protocol for their drone program, right? So they've done drone programs out at ch the Channel Islands. Um, they're actually doing another drone program involving air quality with microplastics. That's gonna be emerging technology and regulation, I believe, in the future of air monitoring. Not, I don't think it's currently anything anyone has to regulate now, but microplastics are in our air. But so they're using drones to capture that information. They have to file their planned flight plan with the FAA and all and the local airports are notified. And they are granted permission to fly over private property just like airplanes fly over private property. Um, I've spoken to Dr. Anderson about the rules that they're governed by. So they are looking for seeps, that's what they're looking for. Um, obviously, and so the first part of their route is they, um, they use kind of infrared heat sensing things to get an idea about where the seeps would be that they would then do a sweep with the air monitors. Um, so it's not, um, we're not taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures, we're looking for targeted things. He, he gave me the example that has come up in their drone work before where people are worried about folks laying out in their backyard mm -hmm. with less than normal clothing on. Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> and he says it occurs and we are required by FAA rules and regulations to delete that. Okay. So, so uh, this public notice of the flight plan or anything? Yes. Okay, so actually, people will get publicly notified that this flight plan will be going over their areas? We will be releasing the information into that community, yes. So we're going to be having a community meeting. As soon as Dr. Anderson has an idea about when the flights will begin, uh -huh. we're going to have a community meeting in the Upper Ojai area. It will be advertised in the local papers and social media, and we have connections with, all, with those people in that area. Um, to have a meeting where folks can come and view the flight plans and ask all their questions. Um, I, at this point, we don't have the plan to like directly notify residents like by mail. Okay. Um, I am just, I, yeah, no, we all do public forums and public information. So I wanted yeah. to ask you that. Absolutely. Um, I had heard that Supervisor Bennett say no, that you weren't telling the residents. Um, and they're not going to be mailing. And so yeah. my question is when all of us get something from a property owner, I'm just trying to make yeah. sure we're informed. Yeah. Well, and it's and our that intention that the community will be well informed. Right. Okay. So e right. Drones get shot out of the sky. So yes. Cal yes. State doesn't want to lose any drones. Right. So <laughs> we, we want to do everything we can. So the community knows what's happening, knows the day it's happening. Um, and then in terms of where they'll be flying from, we will always have permission. You know, there's some at school up there. We're already in contact with some property owners who want them to fly from their property. Um, and they go out with a team. So there's the drone pilot. There's a spotter. 
for that drone pilot. There's a community liaison whose only job is to talk to anybody who comes up. Um, so it's our intention to make sure the community knows it all. There's nothing that needs to be hidden or not known. And there's no reason for that, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Sharkey. <laughs> there is. Um, yeah, these, uh, this mobile monitoring equipment, are you looking for a specific constituents? Or are you doing general survey on, on whatever you find when they walk around with it? Say that again, like for the people who will be participating? Yes. So ideally, we would have all residents who live in those designated disadvantaged communities. Um, and that's our target. That's our goal. And so we're doing canvassing and going door to door in those communities to get those people to come out to those meetings and to have them participate. So what you, what you're looking for just what uh, all, the, all the constituents you can you can measure or are you trying to focus in on hydrocarbons? Oh, you're talking about what we're monitoring for. Yeah. So thank you for asking. So the air beam monitors are just particulate matter monitors. Mm -hmm. but, and then those give us information to determine where stationary monitors will be. Those would be the purple layers, which are also particulates. And then we will be purchasing, um, we haven't decided on the brand yet, but there, it's AQ Mesh is one of the brand names, or Visalia, which are VOC and ROC monitors. Um, and so the data that will be collected by the particulate monitors will help guide us to determine where this, those VOC and ROCs should go to get more information. So we're not particularly um, targeting hydrocarbons or oil and gas emissions in this. We're, it's a broad brush that we're looking for. Okay, one, one, one of the reasons I, I bring this up, and this was something I was gonna discuss with uh, Mr. Viegas later. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, down uh, on Perkins Road in the industrial area of Oxnard, we've got an issue with apparently hydrogen sulfide or some other odor causing issues. And, yeah. and uh, I know, uh, you know one of our enforcement officers has, has conducted a survey down there and we have a, a citizen activist who has deployed some sort of monitoring devices down there. And uh, I don't know the protocol or what they're gonna find, but if you've got a program that's funded, my question then becomes, is it possible to coordinate and look at this particular issue that's going on? Can we, can, is there, is there a way to build on this? Um, I think we should have that conversation. And I would mm -hmm. say too, so the equipment that we are purchasing, Seafrog will then own. And so I think there's also a way to figure out what are we gonna do with the equipment when this program's done, right? So this has a specific plan for this program and we don't want that equipment to just get mothballed. We want it to be used, right? right. So we would, have, we would want to partner and support APCD and have that equipment being used where it can benefit the communities and gather that information. So we should have that conversation. All right, because it's, 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 it's an ongoing issue in, in, in down in my neighborhood, and which yeah. is border South Oxnard, which is a disadvantaged community that you mentioned. Yeah. And uh, you know, this is, if you're looking at more than just particulates and hydrocarbons, then uh, you know, uh, maybe there's an opportunity to be working together here. Yeah, I think so. Great. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, uh, Ms. Rivers. I have a question and I, I uh, concur with uh, Councilman Sharkey here because it is an ongoing issue. Supposedly it's been calmed down lately. I'm not sure that's, the, that's what I'm told. Anyway, but I don't wanna name the company that might have saw a little bit of, uh, might have created some part of that. But um, Oxnard is, it, the, there is some evidence that has a super high rate of asthma compared to other uh, communities or other areas. But also some, would there be any way to test airborne pesticide? Because that's also anecdotally. Right, that's an issue. The monitors, the, this, our program doesn't include monitors for pollution, <clears throat> for, air, for pesticide pollution, excuse me. Okay, yeah. well I hope that you can come to our Oxnard City Council and make Yes. A similar presentation, I'll, I'll try to uh, help you get that on calendar. That's, that would be great. And the other thing I want to say was just tangentially, a lot of our young people are getting involved in vaping. 
And I would think that while that's not part of this, it would really make young people more yeah. um, aware of the dangers to their, their health. Yeah, well, and it is, so in the curriculum, it talks about particulates and <laughs> how it impacts health and gets deep into your lungs, and they, that conversation has come up before, right. you know, in, in other areas where right. they use the curriculum. And as the kids learn and see things and then go, wait, I'm going to breathe that in and, and see what's in and drawing that connection. Thank it you. can be, yeah. And I would definitely urge that if anyone wants uh, her to make a presentation at your city council, please do pass it along to your other council members in case they would like to. I think the uh, community knowing this information is better than not knowing this information. Absolutely. So um, if there's anything further, this is a receive and file if I can get a motion. So moved. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions, motion is approved. Thank, Thank you, you Thank very you much. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Moving on to 17. Yes, uh, this is another 617 item. In April of this year, we came to your board to authorize accepting $142,500 in AB 617 implementation funds being granted by CARB. And uh, unfortunately, we put that amount in the resolution. And in October, we had been discussing with CARB uh, our needs and they allocated another $65,000. So we're coming back with an amended resolution and your board's approval would also authorize the APCO to accept future year grant awards. And we would return to your board and inform you of the grant amounts. That's all I have. Any questions? Uh, can I get a motion for the recommended actions? Motion for approval. Thank you. First and second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, any no's? Okay, motion is approved. Thank you. Moving on to the next item. Yes, this is a change to the APCD management resolution. It has two main components. First, approval of a 1.5% general salary increase. This would apply to management and clerical confidential staff at the district, effective January 13th of next year. Also. It would include the approval of a $50 increase to the biweekly contribution by the district to the flexible benefits program. And this is where management and clerical confidential would use, the, in essence, a cafeteria plan for the purchase of uh, health benefits. Uh, these recommendations are very similar to the ones recently granted to district employees under the agreements with the Service Employees International Union and the Ventura Employees Association. The estimated fiscal cost is just over $16,000, and this was included, included in the district's adopted budget for this year. That's all, all right. I have. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, can I get a motion to approve the recommended actions? Move staff recommendations. Second by Supervisor Zaragoza. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's? Abstention. Motion is approved. Thank you. Next item. Yes, as your board is aware, it's my intention to retire next August. I've consulted with County Human Resources and they most certainly have the experience and expertise to conduct a recruitment for an air pollution control officer. Attached to the board letter is a proposed schedule and the first milestone would be coming to the standing committee in March with a draft of the job announcement to be ready to open and a list of proposed names and potential makeup of a screening committee that would conduct the initial interviews uh, prior to the final interviews by your board. Uh, staff is recommending that you authorize uh, County Human Resources to conduct this recruitment and direct them to work with your board standing committee on the job announcement and selection of a screening committee. That's all I have. And supervise, uh Mike and I both talked about when he was hired, there was three panels. And so what this suggestion is, is to move it to two panels um, for a time and efficiency as well. Uh, we do have one speaker card. If we could hear currently, Russell Sidney, you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Russell Sidney, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I'd also like to thank those folks that are 
have been of service and are moving on to their next phases. That, of course, includes our air pollution control officer, Mark Viegas. <clears throat> As under his uh, leadership, the Air Pollution Control District has been effective in working with criteria pollutions. By the way, I'm with the Sustainable Transport Network, the EV Advocates of Ventura County, and I also assist Senator Stern and Assembly Member uh, Bloom with the PCH Safety Task Force. The new APCD officer will be influencing the priorities for our county moving forward. This is to request that this board recommend the new officer have expertise and experience to work with some specific, more progressive agenda items. Specifically, that they have expertise with alternative fuels of all types, that they have an in-depth knowledge and preferably use electric vehicles, that they encourage school buses to be electrified, and that uh, all the commercial and government uh, options are available become part of the expertise that the new officer brings in. Uh, that includes working with EV charging, which we would love to see more effective programs in that area because it's a huge project. Uh, it also includes alternatives to diesels, including compressed natural gas. Working to get uh, alternative fuels, particularly electric vehicles, into the schools, into the government fleets, and into the commercial fleets is a priority that is being uh, driven by a lot of the APCD boards around the state, state, as are many of these items. And in general, that they have the knowledge and expertise with regards to mitigating greenhouse gas production, as well as planning for uh, the adaptations that will be necessary as the result of the excessive greenhouse gas uh, productions that have been happening. Shifting the priorities uh, away from spending a million dollars for diesel upgrades with less than $50,000 for electric vehicle adoption would, would go a long ways toward us dealing with some of the more current and pressing concerns that we are all faced with. Thank you so much for your time and attention and for the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sidney, for your comments. And it's on record. Brink, uh, Mr. Villegas, if you can come back. Um, board, do you have any comments in regards to this item? Mr. None? Seeing none. All right. Oh, wait. Let me. I'm sorry. We're still in the same item. Yes. Um, I may not be here, but I want to congratulate Mike. Uh, he's been one of the fantastic department heads. In this. When you can get away a 1.5% raise, that's amazing. <laughs> and he's done that all the time I've been on this board. He's done a great job of, man uh, of, ma of management of this agency and uh, dedicating his time. Uh, when we, go, we discussed a lot of business on the way up and back from those meetings uh, about what other people were doing. And huh, someone was talking earlier about uh, an issue where up there they were trying to keep them from having campgrounds out by Pismo Beach because of the sand and the things blowing into houses. Well, those did that before those houses were built, okay? Well, they didn't end up doing it because they couldn't. But uh, that was fought over by a long time by Santa, Elizabeth, or Santa Barbara County, I should say. Anyway, we had a lot of fun looking how everyone else was handling these things. And one of the things could have affected us, that beach thing could have affected Oxnard if they got what they wanted planned. If the, the stuff that'd be stirred up, you couldn't go out with a motorcycle or, or things on the beach then, here. Because that would have been a law they're trying to get passed. Right. And Oxnard would have been affected, just so you know. Well, thank you very much. And Mike, we all have, I think, spoken to you earlier in regards to your service with this board and commission. We appreciate it. Uh, we look forward to you continuing till August. And so we need to get our ducks in a row to ensure that we have a person that will be able to follow your footsteps and, and continue on this board. So could I get a, a recommended action, uh, approve, motion to approve, Supervisor Zaragoza, can I get a second from Commissioner Sharkey. All in favor say aye. 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 Any no's, abstentions? Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Next item, we have our public hearing. And this is on the district service rates and fees. And real quickly, we've been over this uh, many times. There's three main types of fees, the service hourly rates, duplication fees, and the miscellaneous fees. The service hourly rates are the cost of a particular worker classification 
and at salaries, benefits, and allocated overhead. Uh, duplication fees are the fees we would assess for a reproduction of Public Record Act's requests and subpoenaed records and miscellaneous. That would include uh, a fees for bad checks and witness fees. Uh, the air quality engineer has two rates, one for uh, the time spent working on permits, which is by and large uh, the most important rate in the service rates because that's how we handle our permit processing revenue. The good news is that the service rate for the engineer, the calculated rate is only increased 1.5%. State law caps it at 15, so we'll be increasing it by 1.5%. The rate is also the same, that, would, that increase would apply to the time uh, engineer is working on a project other than a permit to operate. Uh, there are other service rates relate to our air quality inspectors, the air quality specialists, and air quality specialists working on EIR review, and then our instrument technicians. Uh, those service rates are limited to the California Consumer Price Index for the period we're looking back on, 3.6%. The calculated rates for those increased by more than 3.6, so they were proposing the 3.6 that's allowed under state law. Uh, there's no changes to the other fees and the service rates for this fiscal year. We'll recommend that your board approve the resolution and the proposed fiscal year 1819 service rates. Let me open the public hearing. I think we need to read this into record. Jessica, do we need to read this into record? I don't know. If not, that's okay. All right, if public is uh, open, do we have any comments? Any public comments? All right, closing the public uh, comment period. Any further discussion? All right, can I get a, a motion for the recommended action? So moved. Second. First and second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? Abstention? Motion has been approved, thank you. All right, moving on to uh, 21. Yes, as you're aware, the district is working on replacing our outdated software that we use to track permits and enforcement actions. And basically, we're making great progress. In December of 2015, we came here to your board and requested a two-year fixed-term position to assist with this effort. And during that two-year term, a lot of work has been completed. We're almost completing the initial modules of the new software that we obtained from the Santa Barbara district, and getting that ready to work for our district, and that includes converting and loading the data from our current system into the new system. But more work is needed before we can go live on this project. Staff is proposing that your board extend for one additional year this fixed term position to help us on this project. Wonderful, thank you. Any discussion? Can I get a motion to approve the recommended approval. action? Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's? Motion approved unanimously. All right, number 22. As you're aware, the Woolsey and the Hill fires re uh, resulted in a significant number of people needing to evacuate, road closures, power outages, and that led to some people being unable to come to work both at the district and at the county. Uh, staff is recommending that your board adopt a resolution identical to the county's and it would allow for 24 hours of leave if the leave was directly related to the Hill or Woolsey fire and the employee would complete a form attesting to that and the leave would be approved by me. Uh, the leave related to uh, having a home uh, destroyed or significantly damaged is not an issue. We didn't have any employee in that situation. And to my knowledge, we only have uh, one employee that actually needed to evacuate and be out of work for a day. And you should be aware that this is identical resolution that was adopted by the County Board of Supervisors for the county employees. And that's all I have. Can I get a motion to approve the recommended action? Second. First and second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's, abstentions? Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you very much for doing that. Next item, I think everyone um, is in on this one. <laughs> Motion to cancel a, a meeting for January 8th, 2019. Uh, regular board meeting. I did vote yes on that resolution. Okay, Jessica, if you can make sure. Thank you so much. 
So the next item, can I get a uh, motion to approve the recommended action Move for canceling? Thank you. First and second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? Motion is approved unanimously. Okay, next item is our correspondence. Motion to approve? Yeah. Spin first, and I'll take Sharky for the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? Yep. Uh, after, after this is All right, done. so motion has been approved on that. Any ending uh, comments? Yeah, uh, uh, personal, uh, point of personal privilege, if I may. Uh, we, we had a brief discussion uh, under the previous item about uh, the issues with uh, odors at Perkins Road, and, and I know uh, uh, there's been some investigation uh, taken by our staff, uh, and I have two, just two requests. One is that this stay before the board is a matter of interest, mm -hmm. and I'd like to know if Mr. Viegas has anything he can tell us about, is, has there been any progress made, or what we know? Do we know anything now that we didn't know last month? Well, we know we, we've sent inspectors out at you know, one in the morning, basically, and we're going to keep doing that until we can confirm. Uh, what we also did, we, we did back off during the Santa Ana's because we just don't get complaints during that whole Hill and Wolseley fire episode. So we, we know, but we, it seems that the complaints started to ramp up again. I got a couple emails uh, yesterday and today, so we'll be getting back out there. And the, the unfortunate thing with some of the odors, that rotten egg is actually hydrogen sulfide. And the unfortunate thing is that there are detectors. The best technology can detect it at about a few parts per million. And the human nose can detect it in parts per billion. So monitoring is not a good solution with that specific source of the odor. So it, it's going to be the inspector with his nose out early in the morning. So. All right, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, Mike, <laughs> this is kind of important for the future. Um, Mike, w when is our next uh, quarterly meeting of the? Um, uh, what we'll do is, it looks like with, you know, canceling January because the city selection committee is going to right. uh, uh, provide the names of three new city members. And I just didn't right. think that you could call those people on the afternoon of Friday the 4th and expect <laughs> right. to be here Tuesday. So when's the next one, February? So we'll, we'll meet in February, and at that time, they'll select a new board member for the Basin White Control Council, and then we'll just compare, I, you know. I just thought because it's January, a lot of times we meet, that uh, you may need some put somebody there now so they can But go. actually, what, what it actually works out because uh, the other two districts, their board meetings are late in January, so we'll all be looking okay, good. for good. dates that work. Just thinking ahead. Thank you. Continue the next month here. We just canceled next month. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, I, you know, it is somewhat time sensitive, but uh, we, we could maybe work a time that. Uh, yes. But we could. Okay. Well, wait, uh, with the brown, we did notice it up there. Yes, we need to do it, um, but in, in time that. certain is really our focus. Yep. Okay. So thank you very much for everyone and standing committee. Let's go quick. Hmm.